Oh, I look away for one second. <laughs> Hey everybody, Garrett Claridge here. Today we're going to be checking out a couple bazooka tubes. And if you haven't heard of a bazooka tube before, you're in for a treat because these things are pretty cool. Now, <laughs> what we have is an all-in-one active subwoofer. These actually have the amplifiers on the back. So they do make a passive version of these, but I have the fancy active ones, or uh, powered ones, as you'd say in the car audio world. Um, let's see here, we have 8-inch woofers on these. They appear to be the same sort of unit, although, let's see here, which one is it? This one right here is about double the weight of this one. Now what's going on here? I thought it was just like a thicker plastic or something, but uh, it turned out one of these is the very fancy Bazooka EL. I'm not too sure what that stands for, but it's actually double the power of the normal bazooka can in here, or <laughs> whatever the heck you want to call it. From what I remember about these is they were very easy to install. There's actually a quick connect cable on the back of here, just like a computer power supply, so you could take it in and out of the car very simply without uh, making any cords short out or anything like that. And the wiring harness in the car was very easy as well. You can use speaker level inputs or line level inputs, and you know what, if you put them in the proper situation, they can sound great. Although I've heard way too many of these things turned up just a little bit too loud and totally shit in the bed all day long. <laughs> but I mean, even the 50 watt version is alright if you're adding just a little bit of bass to your stock sound system, it's gonna make it sound a lot better. But anyway, I'm gonna quit my rambling now and get on with the video. So today, we're actually gonna be tearing these apart, plugging a wire directly into these speaker drivers, and that's going into the Carvin DC M2000. I'm gonna then set it to a stereo mode and we're gonna have these battle to the death. <laughs> so before I tear into these I just want to show you the back a little closer. So here's the classic 50 water. You can see the quick connector cable and just a gain knob on there. That's it. Now over on the EL there's a couple more things. There is actually an LED power. We have the gain knob the connector again, but uh, there's also another connector here that's a 3.5 jack and that's actually made for the auxiliary base control knob. <laughs> Does anyone know what the toggle switch would be for on the back of this? I'm thinking it's for the low pass filter, possibly. I don't remember and I didn't see it online. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas what this switch might do. This is probably going to be a pretty weird video for some of you guys. Um, I'm actually going to save the cabinets on these. Because why not? They're pretty damn cool, right? Wow, this drill's awkward. <laughs> Also something worthy of mentioning, these are Robertson screws, a Canadian invention. They're the square ones. I've never seen that much on any kind of audio at all, really. There we go. Alright, here's our first look at, this is the 50 watt one. Alright, let's see what this, oh, nice. And not is it only <laughs> not only is it bigger, it has two voice coils. No dual voice coil. Let's see here. So the difference in weight must have just been these speaker magnets because these feel like the same weight now. These will make really nice enclosures for something. So okay, the original box has this kind of insulation. <laughs> That's the little bit more thicker stuff that's more commonly found in like a couch cushion or something. Now, the EL has fiberglass insulation like you'd find in your home walls. I particularly like this kind of insulation a little more for acoustics. Wow. It is a lot more dusty though. 
The back amplifier is using another Robertson, but it's the smaller version. Holy hell, they have a friggin' phone number. 1-800-THE-TUBE. <laughs> the 50-watt one actually uses Phillips screws on the back. Okay, let's compare these amps. Now, the 50-watter... <laughs> That's all we got. Not too bad though, nice little board. Now the 100 watt EL version. Oh yeah. You know what, it looks like it's double the amplifier. <laughs> well, how do I turn these? So the 100 watt amplifier is really cool. This thing, I could see all kinds of little projects I could do with this thing. Anyway, there she is. It looks like it's double the amplifier, honestly. So since the 100 watt has a dual voice coil, I'm actually just jumping the wires. You know, so uh, they're gonna be getting the same signal and I'm pretty sure that's gonna have the proper impedance if you add them together. I remember anything from the short stint of car audio installation I've done. This is probably some of the worst soldering I've ever done, but whatever. So we see the movement a little better. I'm going to use one of these paint markers. All right, we should be able to get a good sense of their movement now. There we have 50 hertz. A lot of motor noise on these. I thought it was the bench, but it's just the driver. Ooh, I can definitely smell one of them. It's the dual voice coil. 100 water is already making some smells, but they might not have been used in a very long time. There's 30 hertz. And we have this crazy smell of burning coil happening. They seem like they move pretty well the same. I'll never get tired of that. <laughs> All right, let's get these things moving with a little music. I got a new track by From Zero to Z and Stefan S.O. <laughs> I think that's how you say your name. Something like that. <laughs> I'll put the link in the description. Thank you. 
for one second. <laughs> The fan in this amp is just going full clip. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, that smells bad. <laughs> And here's what we have for coils. So the 50 watt version and the 100 watt version. Again, it just seems like double the size. That's pretty cool. The surround on this thing is crazy. Ugh. Wow. <laughs> it's a workout just taking these things apart. Well, there goes one of my cameras. Speaking of which, really sorry I didn't hit record on this camera. I wish that recorded the blowout. <laughs> Hopefully this one got it. Had to double check that. It looked like the coil was perfectly fine. But it shorted out someplace. This one didn't blow out that good, but oh man. The EL version, that thing put out a smoke show. <laughs> Let's see what the, oh. The EL version has really crappy foam. That's the only downside to the EL I see is the crappy foam they used. Oh yeah, yeah, this one made a mess. Oh man. Well, there we have it, I guess the EL wins. <laughs> What'd you expect, really? It's double the power. Too bad about this one though, not even a touch of smoke. <laughs> well, that's about it for these bazooka tubes. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like the video, drop a comment, or subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching everybody and have a great day.